I think the first thing I want to get into here, Greg, is, um, you know, we all experience it. We can't avoid it. It's physical. It's emotional, sometimes spiritual pain. So the idea of pain, um, what's your thoughts on pain and why we need it? What is it here for? And why do we experience uh, so much of it? And, uh, you know, how do we deal with it? I would say that pain is our body mind's feedback mechanism that's mirroring back to us what we're choosing to create in our lives. And it mirrors back to us our choices, our behaviors, but on a deeper level, our belief systems. And I think pain arises when we reach a point in which the ways in which we were navigating life starts to create more pain than offer us benefit. You know, for example, like we talked about even just like on the intro, like that victim archetype where I used pain as a way of getting certain emotional needs met. And I reach a point in my life where creating pain as a way of getting those needs met is holding me back from experiencing the freedom and empowerment that I'm really looking for. So pain is a great opportunity to take a look at what we're creating, how we're getting our physical, mental, and emotional needs met, and how we can learn to do that in a more empowered way. And, you know, the reason I love archetypes, which we'll get into a little bit later, is archetypes give us a language to understand all of these patterns. You know, for example, the saboteur being the archetype of self-sabotage. Well, one of the most important archetypes to look at when you experience pain is the archetype of the saboteur which is a lot of times the archetype that's creating the pain. And it's also the archetype that's benefiting from the pain. So one of the best questions we can ask ourselves, which is one question that most people don't explore within themselves when they have pain, is what part of me is benefiting from it? What part of me is actually benefiting from this pain? And the healing process, it's almost like we don't heal until we reach a point where getting out of pain, we see more benefit in that than we do see benefit in staying in pain. Mm. You know, and once we cross that threshold and the ratios kind of start to work in our favor, that's when the healing actually happens. But I don't think, now I can't prove this to be true, but I don't think we ever have pain in our life unless some part of us is benefiting from it. Mm. Wow. So, and the benefit could just be the learning opportunity that we have or that we get from exploring how we might be creating it or what it's here to teach us. So, you know, the beauty of pain is it's always an opportunity. It's an opportunity for deeper understanding, deeper awareness, and greater awareness of what we're choosing to create in our life. But the question that I love and I'm so kind of focused on right now is what part of us benefits from pain? Like I said in the intro, it's, you know, getting my emotional needs met. For someone else, it might be they're getting medical leave from a job that they don't enjoy and they're seeing therapists and getting the intimate connection and compassion that they're not getting in their intimate relationship or romantic relationship. So you realize that underneath pain, there's so many intricacies of needs that are getting met that we're completely unconscious of and until we start doing this inner work and inner exploration. Wow, that's um, I love it. very insightful. I, I love that, uh, how you unpack that. And uh, it's very interesting to us because I think that we always see pain on the surface, right? And we always go, mm -hmm. oh my God, why is this happening to me? And, and this, you know, this is so terrible and I can't get over this. And there's so many things that go on, but if we really look at it as something that we can benefit from, that we can find uh, golden nuggets in, that we can find the reasons why that's happening to us, we can really start to um, grow and, and change ourselves and then move beyond those areas uh, that are causing us the pain into probably another area of pain to even further uh, our journey. Um, I, I think that 
pain is just part of life in a lot of ways and uh we're going to always find somewheres where it's going to be as high as we get no matter what <laughs> no matter what we can't escape it on this uh, at least in these uh 3d bodies yeah. and yeah. stuff uh jaron you have uh, uh some things to add well as you pull as you ask that question i uh accidentally there are no accidents but i i ran across a, cro a quote i had not on purpose uh from michael beckwith reverend michael beckwith again that the pain pushes until the vision pulls and i've talked about that here before pain pushes until your vision pulls and when your vision pulls you're in harmony with the cosmos and the cosmos is working with you to take you where you wish to go and to mirror to you who you are freshly, but the pain will push you and you will push through the pain until you step into the vision. Now, at first it makes me think of practices that allow you to vibrationally and consciously align yourself with who you are presently and where you want to go presently and how you want to act presently, such as a morning practice that will put you there. So that is one step. How often are we going to that? Are we going to the fantasy? That's ultimately what it means. Am I allowing myself to feel and be inspired by my purpose, my passions, my fantasy, what I want to give in this world, what I want to experience in this world? Sometimes, because if I don't, I'm going to be in resistance to what's going on. Now, the second thing I wanted to say is um, I was remembering back in 2011, I was in Los Angeles at this kind of like, let's call it supercomputer alchemy uh experience where it was um you know alchemy meets quantum computing relatively not quite that but you know what i'm saying i've talked about this before and the guy there was saying you know when in his explore, exploration of it was that the suffering is not being who you say you are that's the root cause of all suffering who you say you are to yourself you know somewhat innately consciously believe you are to yourself you're not being it and when we start to be who we say we are and behave as we say we are and act in accordance to who we say we are the suffering begins to end now obviously pain comes through long-term elements of imbalance or having areas of lower frequency to your overall set point so you know there's the internal aspect but then there's the external aspect to pain which is where are there places in my life where the frequency is either not matching my authenticity of a lower frequency, or maybe I'm not behaving the same with that particular area of my life so that I can move forward, you know, because it's our past and our external that has limiting aspects to the spirit within that has become present to who and what it really is. So inevitably, it's a gift and an opportunity, like Gregory said, I totally I'm aligned with that. Um, but there's different areas of pain. Finally, I'll say this. Like, again, back to last week, the karmic pain versus the dharmic pain. <laughs> if it's dharmic pain, we're enjoying it a little more. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm accomplishing something. If it's extra karmic pain, we are in the loops and we are um, not being authentic. We're not updating ourselves and we're not working through the things that we've probably worked on for a long time to get through, but we're holding on. I think this it's also a lost thing uh, in parenting. We don't teach our children how to deal with pain. We're kind of always brushing it off, not only physically, you know, they fell, oh, you're okay, blah, 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 but also emotionally, right? When they get upset about something, um, oh, that's a silly thing to get upset about, or, you know, wipe those tears, it's gonna be okay. We don't like help them deal with their emotions um, and explain to them like what they are, even listen to them and find a solution to how to deal with them. So um, I think when we get to our adulthood, we're like trying to learn something that we were never taught. So sometimes it can be harder, right? Uh, because we have all these um, emotions and new experiences that we don't know how to deal with. We were never taught how to deal with them. And one of the dangers of that is that creates a lot of adults who end up loving diagnoses yes. once they have pain in adulthood and they go to a doctor and they get a diagnosis the child inside of them says finally someone understands me yes absolutely someone gets my pain someone has a 
um, an answer to my experience. Yeah. Someone's validating why I'm feeling this way. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the danger is you set that up and now you have a whole culture that is very attached to boxing themselves into a diagnosis. Yeah, and medications to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's scary. And you have adults who don't know how to deal with their emotions and they throw tantrums <laughs> over the mm -hmm. smallest things. <laughs> Yeah, you look at uh, <laughs> the the term emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that we don't teach young people how to deal with emotions and how to actually be uh, wise with them um, and how to use them to, you know, either catalyst or catapult them forward um, into life and understanding how to dance with it. Um, instead, we kind of tend to either push down the emotions or we uh, cater to the emotions, right? And we do the, one of those two things instead of actually uh, really teaching how to be emotionally intelligent mm -hmm. and, uh, and understand self much better. Um, so I think that's a, a big thing there. Um, <clears throat> Greg, we had uh, Mimi and Chase on a couple of weeks ago and um, you were on their show. I think you've been on there three times. Um, but um, <clears throat> you were talking with them about pain but when it comes to relationships right because i think with human beings man relationships whether they're intimate whether they're business whether they're friendships family they can be very complicated and there can be a lot of pain that's involved in relationships you want to talk a little bit about that well as our mutual friend paul check says to grow spiritually you don't need a church or a temple you just need a committed relationship <laughs> yes and i think relationships are really the the vehicles that we use to come to know ourselves you know without relationship how can you really know yourself if you don't have any mirror reflecting back to you aspects of yourself you know so i think this is why you know, the divine creates separateness or individuality is to come to know itself. And this is how we come to know ourselves. And I think also, you know, relationships, especially intimate ones, but as we go into adulthood, are also the vehicles that we use to heal. And a lot of times we're healing a lot of unfinished business mm -hmm. from childhood things with our parents things from previous relationships so you know it's very rare that we're actually coming into any relationship with just a blank slate you know we're we're coming we're coming with our whole story our whole narrative our whole history our core wounds and i think each character in our life is playing the exact role that they're meant to play to bring up whatever inside of us still needs healing and resolution. So, you know, like a soulmate, for example, could actually be someone that really triggers you. But the difference is once they trigger you, you can walk through that together. You know, you can support each other in the healing process. And I think that's really the essence of what relationships are for. It's to bring up whatever is unresolved within ourselves wherever it is that we're not yet, excuse me, not yet fully whole within ourselves. And like Ramdas says, we're all walking each other home. 